Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be going over a curve attractor uh, script and so as you can see here you can move this little curve around and uh, have the pattern change according to um, how close that line is to those um, that geometry and so we can also have kind of those overlapping have them overlapping or you can have it be small and then also have the other ones be, get bigger so that's using this this curve here and as you can see we move it around and this is just a two-dimensional pattern that we're creating here but I'm sure there's a way to uh, do that on a three-dimensional one which I can probably um, figure out later on and kind of go over with you so um, I want to give credit for where I learned this. Um, I, this is kind of my take on what I learned, but I learned this from this person. This is Grasshopper Tutorial 12 Domains, uh, Individualized Production and Architecture. And so um, this is you know the video that I watched to, to learn how to create that point attractor uh, curb and so yeah, I just want to make sure I give credit to the people that, you know, inspired me and taught me these things. So make sure to go check out this tutorial and learn from this, uh, this person because obviously they know the program a lot better. So let me give you an idea of how it's done. Um, it's basically, I did it us using a basic grid and what it does is it just uh, depending on the points and how close this curve is to those that that grid it creates a distance that we can then adjust here so we can this is a maximum uh, radius and so we can adjust that and this is the minimum radius and as like as I said before this is something that we could adjust um, to get whatever effect we want and so I will be going over the script uh, of how that goes but if you check out uh, the tutorial that I just mentioned they will go over a completely different way of creating a grid now that's important to know because this component here basically does all of this all of these steps creates them all in one so to be able to understand how this is created, it's important to understand how to create a range of points and, and for them to be constructed into a grid. So if I take this and I hide it, so I'm going to do the space bar and disable preview here, I can show you that if I go here and I pre put the preview on, oh, sorry about that, let me do that again. So if I go here and I preview all these, you can see that I have um, my the original uh, one that I had. Give me one second. Uh, the original one that I, where I learned from gives you uh, starts with circles and creates this grid of points uh, by constructing a start and end domains. And creating these these points here as you can see with the panels so like like I said before make sure to check out that video and uh, but for my uh, my take on it was um, and also it was a question that I had gotten from from someone in another video they wanted to know how to create a curve attractor or a point attractor uh, for a pattern that I had created on, on the other video so my take was to basically uh, instead of using circles just use some basic uh, basic polygons here and so I can hide some of these things to uh, make it make sure that I can see everything correctly and as you can see it was basically using this grid now this grid can increase in size um, so if we have a you know we could also make it smaller we make it tighter make it larger and so that is kind of my take on it was to be able to create these, see now we now we have um, 
Let me hide this one first. I wanted to be able to have a pattern, but not just circles. I wanted to be able to use polygons, which is kind of interesting uh, once you get to like the hexagon, because now we can not just change, you know, circle diameters, but we could also change shapes and and um, and polygons here depending on whatever we want and so we can go here hit F10 do some weird stuff and now we see that that pattern changes accordingly we could also like I said before make this larger smaller here actually and then put make these a little bit larger you could even write things or create some interesting things so okay so to get this uh, started we're gonna start by going to vector um, square grid just to keep it simple and so this is called a yeah 2d uh, square grid and it has um, 2d grid so we're gonna start with this one and then we're gonna create a slider of 10 just to keep it simple and so that's gonna be the size it's gonna be 10 by 10 and now to create a let's create a slider for the extent of the X and Y and also keep it simple by inputting into there and as you can see we have a grid here um, so it has the cells and it has the points what we're going to be using mostly is going to be the points here so now that we have the grid let's go ahead and create a panel here to give you an idea of how this creates that grid it creates a grid and it's showing here a panel and it's showing all of these points which is basically sets of points of the the rows so as you can see it goes from 1 to 20 and it just keeps going and going and going of sets of 20 because we have 20 in one direction 20 in another direction and it arrays that way so one of the things we're going to need to do is flatten this that way we have not just sets but we have the complete number of uh, all the complete number of the points that we have here so as you can see we have 440 points and what that's going to do is allow us just to uh, be able to look at all of these points as just one complete list the next thing we're going to do is create that curve, which I'm just going to create a circle here. And so you do this inside of the Rhino, um, inside of Rhino. You could also create probably a circle inside a Grasshopper, but that's not the point. The point is to be able to update it as we create this. So to be able to bring in this curve, we're going to have to go here and type in curve. And so it'll give you this curve which you're gonna right click and set one curve that way this curve here is now brought into grasshopper so now that we have this curve here there's a component that is important to use in this point attractor which is curve closest points so if you type in curve uh, it doesn't show up right away so curve closest point that's, that, that's this one here and so what we're gonna do is plug in the curve and here the points what it does is it basically cre starts creating the points here which um, we're not really gonna use and we but we're, what we are gonna use is that distance so what that distance is is it gives um, it calculates how close those points are uh, on the grid how close they are to this uh, curve and so that's what's going to give us the uh, the like the variation of the the you know the distances that we're going to use as a point attractor so I'm going to delete this this panel because now we understand um, how to flatten those points and get them all organized in just one list and so as you can see here on the on the distance if we put in a panel 
to see what's going on. You see that there's a huge list of distances ranging from 103, you know, it just all of them as one list as you know as we want. But what it what we want to do is be able to understand what's the lowest number and what's the largest number. So let's do a bound. So it's the components called bounds which creates a domain that encompasses the listed number. So it'll get the smallest and the biggest number. So if we plug that in here, let me show you with a panel what this does. Is it'll give you, you know, the smallest number 0.052 to the biggest number which is 103.16 and if we move this it's going to change that because it's always going to give you a bigger or smaller number depending on where it's located so that's what this this does it gives you the range from beginning to the end so now that we understand that we need to now be able to you know we can already have a polygon and put that polygon in the planes you put it there so we have it on that grid so I'm gonna go ahead and unpreview that and it's not changing now if we put this distance in the radius see now now we're getting something one of the things I tried was to divide and that's one of the things that you could do for just a quick uh, just to decrease the size fairly quickly if you do a division of the distance, take all those distances and divide them by three and then put them in the radius, they start getting a little bit smaller, but we're not getting the range that we want. Now these are just, you know, this kind of works, but it's not exactly, it's not giving us the, the ability to be able to change the size uh, according to exactly what we want. This is just going to give us a bunch of results of thing of numbers that we're not really sure about so that's why um, that's not exactly the the best way to go about it but this next step is going to give you the ability to to um, target or to know exactly what uh, the lowest number is going to be and what the biggest number is going to be so the next component we're going to use it's going to be called construct domain but the this one with the two with the squared on top that's for three dimensions we're just going to be doing a two-dimensional pattern so we're just going to use this one and so what this does is allows us to you know know exactly what um, what size we want to start with and what size we want to end with so let's go here to 3.1 because we do want it to be, um, we want to be able to not just go three, four, five. We want to be able to go subtle, subtle increments. And so let's also, I'm going to copy that, and we want the end to be higher. So let's just go to seven point five. So now we, so the, that's what we're going to use. It's going to be called construct domain, and you create your small number and your big number that's what's going to allow us to vary the size now there should be something in between here that takes this information from the beginning smallest number to the biggest number and takes all those numbers and starts them from 3.1 and then some at 7.5 so as the name kind of implies we want to remap the numbers right so the numbers that we have originally are no longer going to be used um, which is this distance here as you can see those numbers we're not going to use anymore we want to remap them and to remap them we're going to take you know the value the original value we're also going to take the source which is going to be one we're going to need a value from zero uh, you know two values so it's going to take we're going to take this one this is going to give us the minimum and maximum 
of all of these numbers that goes in there and here this will give you the number the target so we want to go from 3.1 to 7.5 that's the size that we want so okay we have that there and it didn't really do much we still have these polygons that have not changed size so what are we gonna do let's see if that works so now that we plug that in we have a way better idea of if it works and yes it's getting a lot closer to what we want but to be able to see it correctly we're gonna have to unpreview this or let's preview this and unpreview that that way we can see that when we move it around it changes the polygon size accordingly and that's that's really that's really useful that's something that we can use on a canopy or on any type of design that we would like and what's cool is that we can come here and as you can see some some of them here overlap so we can take that maximum number and we can just go okay that's a lot better we can even make this something smaller that way we can vary that And so, you know, if you make this small enough, it, it almost becomes a point. So you don't really necessarily need like a point attractor. You can just use a small curve or a small line to create the same effect that you would with like a point attractor. Um, and so you can also do some stuff like this, which I feel like it's, it's pretty interesting. But let's move on and, and see what else this pattern can do. So what's cool about this pattern is we can just, you know, go from three to nine. So the, w the way I do this to create a range from three to nine is I go double click three, then do dot, 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 nine. And so what it does is it goes from three to nine. And so let's create a polygon that has nine segments. That's almost a circle but we can also go down to a triangle and so we could also go to this which starts creating a pretty cool pattern and you know we can also say um, we can fill it the radius if we if we want that so let's do 1.1 so we can kind of have that as I showed in, in the other um, tutorial, kind of doing a fillet kind of helps them not clip all the way. Um, some of them will become circles, but the ones out here will be, uh, you know, the, the polygon size. So let's switch these over. So there we have, there we have basically the pattern that we're looking for. Uh, we could also, you know, go ahead and play around with this, but for the most part, that's the idea. And if you want to increase the density of it, you can just lo make this smaller, or you can, you know, increase this to like 30, and we can make this, you know, a more sparse pattern. We could also go here to increase the the maximum and minimum so let's go to 8.8 .8. we're now creating getting a pretty interesting effect so we've achieved this point attractor uh, basically set of polygons with uh, basically a few steps it was it didn't take too much but now let's go further and create it into a solid and see if we can uh, do some some um, some differencing and do some making it into a solid that way we can you know do a render and and see you know what the what the final result could be for something like this so I'm pretty happy with the way this pattern is looking but as you can see it's clipping a little bit here so let's go to like seven and the small ones let's keep them at one let's make them a little bit bigger now let's get a cool effect there with point eight. So there we have that. Now 
let's create a rectangle around this that way we can you know make it into a solid so let's create a rectangle here and there we have a tiny rectangle here but we want it to be take the extent of the grid which I do by doing a basic multiplication and this I think only works with the square grid so if you take the 20 and the 15 and you put it into the X and in the Y you'll get that extent and so if we take that and we offset it I'm gonna unpreview this that way when I plug it in I can see uh, if it's offsetting out or in so I'm gonna hide that put the rectangle here do like a 12 put that distance in and yeah it's offsetting out so that's kinda what we want so that's gonna give us the the outside form uh, panel for what we're gonna be subtracting and so let's um, let's go ahead and create that solid I'm gonna extrude this base the and I'm gonna go in the Z direction unit of three so there we have that extrusion in the direction of Z but as you can see it's not we're not getting the on on the top view we're not getting a solid so we just do what we usually do on preview this cap B rep and so there we have a solid slab we can change and vary the, the sides and the thickness of it so with that we can just unpreview it we can also unpreview this and we have all of these really cool polygons that we've created now we're gonna extrude them also so I'm just gonna copy this over slide over use alt and put in the polygons here and we now have all of these polygons that are now extruded the same amount as that so I'm gonna hide it because we're gonna do a boolean difference what the boolean difference is gonna do is subtract basically the the this geometry which is which are the polygons that are extruded and that uh, they're gonna subtract I'm basically gonna subtract the polygons that are extruded from that solid slab that I created so let's do that let's do a solid difference and let's make sure that when I preview this that's a slab so that's gonna be a that's what we want to keep and then we're gonna put in the B which is what we want to take away so as you can see this is a very heavy uh, calculation because you're taking all of these polygons which is going to be you know really heavy especially when you extrude them and you have fillets so that creates a round edge round edges take longer to subtract um, so we have to be patient and see what the result comes out with so it took a little bit of time not too much but as you can see we have this subtracted you know pattern that was created from um, from the polygon and that slab and you know if I go ahead and change this number here which is 7 and we change it to 7.5 um, 7 it will take a while again but it'll it'll create less spacing between these um, between the polygons so this is the final result that we got here I'm gonna be doing a bake and I'm gonna do a render but I'm also gonna be deforming this um, using some other commands in just Rhino not in Grasshopper but I will uh, come back to do a variation on this and show you how it can be created on a like more uh, three-dimensional flow uh, surface 
So I did have this uh, the question of how to create a pattern like this uh, from a uh, that was from 2D and how to create a point attractor. So this is for you and uh, thank you for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions or if you have ideas for any other videos. That's that's the way that we can all grow and we could all learn together. This is uh, it cleaned up. I will make sure to add links uh, for all of these scripts and the model uh, in the description. So uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, thank you for watching.